All right, so in this video, I'm gonna solve the equation x to the power of 12 minus one is equal to zero. So to solve this, I'm gonna first rewrite this as x to the power of six to the power of two minus one squared is equal to zero. And the reason I'm doing this is so I can use the property a squared minus b squared is equal to a plus b times a minus b. So this turns into x to the power of six plus one times x to the power of six minus one is equal to zero. So this gives me two equations. I get x to the power of six plus one equals zero and x to the power of six minus one equals zero. Now I'm gonna do the same thing again. I'm gonna rewrite x to the power of six minus one equals zero as x to the power of three to the power of two minus one squared is equal to zero. <clears throat> so I can use this property again and get x to the power of three plus one times x to the power of three minus one is equal to zero. Now, for x to the power of three minus one equals zero, I can, I'm can i gonna rewrite this as x to the power of three minus one to the power of three equals zero, so I can use the property a to the power of three minus b to the power of three is equal to a minus b times a squared plus a b plus b squared. So this turns into a minus b times a squared plus a plus one is equal to zero. Sorry, this turns into x minus one times x squared plus x plus one is equal to zero, which gives me yet another two equations. So now I have x minus one equals zero and x squared plus x plus one equals zero. So for x minus one equals zero, all I have to do is add one on both sides and I get x is equal to one. And for x squared plus x plus one equals zero, I can use the quadratic formula. So by using it, I get x is equal to negative one plus or minus the square root of three i over two. So these are two more solutions. And now we aren't done yet because we also have to solve these. So now I have x to the power of three plus one is equal to zero. And I'm gonna subtract one on both sides. So I get x to the power of three is equal to negative one meaning x is also equal to negative one. So this is another solution. Now for x to the power of six plus one equals zero, I'm gonna again subtract one on both sides. So I get x to the power of six is equal to negative one. And if I take the sixth root, I get x is equal to six root of negative one, which is equal to negative one to the power of one over six. So now, the sixth root of negative one is, say the, we know that I is equal to the square root of negative one, which is equal to negative one to the power of one half. So negative one to the power of one over six is the same thing as negative one to the power of one half minus something. So now one over six, or I should say one half minus one over six is equal to one over three. So one over six plus one over three is equal to one half. We know this, meaning we have negative one to the power of one over six And this plus, or sorry, I should, one over two minus one over three is what we can rewrite one over six as. Now, this is the same thing as one half plus negative one over three. And if I have something in the form a to the power of m plus n, 
this is equal to a to the power of m times a to the power of n. So this is going to equal negative 1 to the power of 1 half times negative 1 to the power of negative 1 over 3. Negative 1 to the power of 1 half is the square root of negative 1, which is equal to i. So we get i times negative 1 to the power of negative 1 over 3, which is the same thing as 1 over negative 1 to the power of 1 over 3, which is equal to negative 1. So I get i times negative 1, which is equal to negative i, which is my final solution. All right, so in this video, I'm going to solve the equation x to the power of x is equal to 3. So to solve this, I'm going to first start by taking the ln, or natural log, on both sides. So I get ln of x to the power of x is equal to ln of 3. Now, an important property of logarithms is that if I have something in the form ln a to the power of b, I can move this exponent b to the front, so this turns into b times ln a. So in this case, I have ln x to the power of x, and I can move x to the front, so I get x times ln x is equal to ln 3. Now, I'm going to use an important formula called the W Lambert formula. And it states that if I take the W of something in the form A times E to the power of A, then this is equal to A. So this is the W Lambert formula. So in this case, I'm going to rewrite this so that it suits the W Lambert formula. So we need to change this to be in the form a times e to the power of a. Well, how am I going to do that? Well, I'm going to first start by rewriting this x as e to the power of ln of x, because x, e to the power of ln cancel out, so that's just x is all that remains. So x is the same thing as e to the power of ln x, and I have this times ln x is equal to ln 3. So now, notice how this is in the form a times e to the power of a. a, in this case, being ln x. So it's the form ln x times e to the power of ln x is equal to ln 3. So now if I take the w Lambert function on both sides, I get w of ln x times e to the power of ln x is equal to ln 3. And this is just equal to a. So, and sorry, I have to take the w on both sides. So I get w of ln 3. And then now, I'm left with ln of x is equal to w of ln 3. Now, I want to get rid of this ln, so I'm just going to take e to the power of both sides. e to the power of ln is, these two cancel out, so I get x is equal to e to the power of w of ln of 3. So this is my answer to this equation. Now, if you haven't already, please make sure to subscribe, leave a like, and check out uh, other videos that are similar to these on my channel. Thank you.